So I have something a little bit different for you today here on Dr. Creepin's Vault. This is an incomplete story, and there's a very, very good reason for that. Because at the end of today's episode, you're going to get the choice of how the story continues. That's right, I'm going to give you three options as to how you want this story to end. Are you up for the challenge? I think you are. Well, another fantastic one from Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up, so I could read the stories that you sent to me back to you. Okay, listen carefully, because you need to make a very tough decision at the end of this one. You ready? Okay then, it's time for you all to sit back and relax with your favourite drink, and listen. The two five-year-old twins hugged Lisa, who wiggled her fuzzy tail and rubbed against them. Their mother watched with a wide smile. She turned to me and opened her stitched-up purse. I'll give you the other half in a month. She handed me a few folded dollar bills. I put my palm against them. You're not doing too well these days. The price is one caring family. I glanced at the dog and kids. And from the looks of it, you've already paid me. The mother smiled and kissed me on the forehead. She led her kids and new family member out of the dog pound. Two hands covered my eyes. Guess who? I put my fingers over my chin. Hmm, is it an angel? Jenny giggled from my back and kissed my cheek. I opened my eyes and turned to face her. (laughs) Beautiful as always. I kissed her nose. She changed her tone to a more serious one. You mean well, but you are already on thin ice with the boss. Since my arrival, more than 20 dogs have been adopted. I put my hand on her shoulder. He won't mind if three went out for free. Jenny got her smile back and hugged me. (sighs) You're probably right. Arm still around my waist, she locked eyes with me. Sometimes you can be too kind. Her stare shifted to my mouth. I'd hate to see it bring you trouble. As I've always said, do good and good things will happen to you, I replied with a reassuring tone. The metal chain link gate ringed. A tall man in a black suit entered, his chest puffed up, clean shaved and well built. Good morning. Looking to adopt a little buddy. He made an evil grin. We're getting tired of your games, I frustratedly said. Games? No games here. He squeezed through by my side and hopped over to Jenny. Care to show me around? He had that same grin on his face. (gasps) You've been coming here for months. You ever plan on adopting anyone? Jenny gave him a condescending smirk. I'm just taking my time. He glanced at his new expensive silver watch. Look at the time. Ooh, I have to return to my yard. The man spun on his heel and walked to me, still looking at Jenny. Which, I should add, has room for two. I know, you've told me. She didn't seem impressed. If there isn't anything else, bye. He waved at her and hopped off. Once the gate closed, we both laughed. (laughs) What a joke, acting like a peacock. I slapped my leg. He's been coming here for a year. Just can't take no for an answer, Jenny giggled. We got back to work, and the hours quickly passed by. Holding each other's hand, we exited the dog pound, now wearing casual clothes, and made our way home. Jenny stopped me by some broken wood fence. Remember when we were twelve? The old fence behind school? (laughs) That was nine years ago. Without thinking... For a second, I smiled. (laughs) Of course I remember. That game. What do we call it? Fence jumping. How can you forget such a simple name? Jenny eagerly jogged over to it. What were the rules? I massaged my neck while attempting to remember. Jenny put her hands to each side and bent her legs in, leaping over the hole in the fence and landing on the grass behind it. She waved to show how easy it was. Lose if you fall. I smiled and mimicked her. Now on the other side, we let out a giggle. (laughs) Watch this. Using just one hand, 
I jumped over the fence and returned to my original position. Oh yeah? She took a few steps back. A group of old people sluggishly walked on the other side of the street. They stopped and watched me and Jenny, repeatedly jumping over a fence. <sighs> Crazy young folk, one of them muttered and shook their head. By the time we got home, it was evening. Jenny threw a dirty top on the couch. I'll take a quick shower. She made her way to the other room. I got out a carton of orange juice, poured myself a glass and walked out to the balcony. Leaning on the railing, I admired the city. You gonna drink that? A figure appeared in my peripheral vision. I jumped back and turned to face it. A tall man with a white unbuttoned shirt. One hand on the railing, smiled with his mouth closed. There weren't signs of a weapon, and he didn't appear to be all that strong. Can, can I help you? Yeah, you can. Without opening his mouth too wide when talking, he tried to hide his smile. I've been watching you. This man could be mentally ill. What can I help you with? Are you feeling sick? No, not in the least. The man let out a sigh. Do good things and good things will happen. He quoted me. I took a step back, poured the orange juice out, and nervously pointed the glass up as a weapon. Have you been stalking me? Stalking? No. Observing? He turned his back towards me and entered my apartment. Do you believe people can be good? The man sat on our couch and crossed his legs. I followed him in. Of course. I grabbed a vase and stood behind him. Well, I'm not so sure about that. He put his hands together and played with his thumbs. Every uh, good person I've seen turned out to not be so good. His head slightly tilted. If you uh, know what I'm saying. Jenny walked in the room with her pajamas on. Who is this person? She ran to my side. I have no idea. He's been stalking me. He stood up and faced us. I would love to be proven wrong. For the first time, when the man smiled, he showed his teeth, all of which were sharp and pointy. I threw the vase at him. It bounced off of his body and shattered to pieces on the ground. He gazed into Jenny's eyes. Join me. She walked to his side, her face full of fear. I charged the man, but with a simple motion, he grabbed me by the back of my shirt and launched me into the wall. A cracking sound came from my shoulder on impact. What makes a person good? The man broke a chair in pieces and took a sharp dagger-like fragment. Is it the person himself? Or the people around them? He put the wood up to her neck. While she couldn't move her body, her eyes followed the sharp fragment. Stop it! I felt a pain in my back as I got up. I limped to another vase and attempted to bash it into him. Using his palm, he quickly knocked me back down to the floor. The man no longer hid his sharp teeth when he spoke. I really wonder how many horrors can a man endure before changing. The wood formed a small bloody scar on Jenny's neck as he applied force to it. There was definitely something broken in my body. I couldn't get up. No, I yelled. The man threw the piece of wood away. <laughs> Learn to laugh. I'm just messing with you. He made a hideous smile, revealing all of his teeth. Tears came down from Jenny's eyes. She attempted to move, but only shivered. Hmm. Would have been funny if I made it that easy. I extended my hand out towards the love of my life. Jen! The man grabbed Jenny by the head and twisted her body towards him, making eye contact. You no longer love him. He is a monster. He tried to rape and kill you multiple times. 
The man's face was stone cold. Call the police and run back to your real love. That dude with the art. He loosened his grip and gently petted Jenny's head. She stared into nothingness for a moment before composing herself. As if the man wasn't there, Jenny scanned the room and her eyes stopped on me. The love I'd once seen in them had turned to fear. She let out a loud scream, slammed the door open and ran out of the apartment. My man, how could you do that to the poor girl? The man shook his head in disappointment. Jenny, come back. I'd never hurt you, I cried out. The man walked to me and grabbed my wrist. He slowly lifted my body and faced me. Oh, you're a good person. You'll handle this. He giggled. His eyes shifted to my wrist. Not going to be fair if I left you hanging with nothing. As monstrous as he acted up to now, his eyes still showed emotion. All of that washed away as he licked his lips. The man looked like a predator staring down at its prey. Once he sunk his teeth into my wrist, it felt like he would bite my hand off. I screamed from the horrible pain. Blood poured everywhere. Jen, I whispered to myself, hoping the memory of her would help me through this. I felt lightheaded. Everything turned darker and darker until I blacked out. The morning sun filled the filthy college dorm with light. A young, muscular man performed push-ups on top of the old metal bunk bed. The small wooden desk, crammed between the bed and the wall, cracked under the weight of multiple duffel bags. So many, they leaned against the wall. A grey toilet with its seat down protruded from the colourful poster-covered wall. Troy, wearing his lime boxes and a stained t-shirt, rested on it, book in hands. An envelope slipped under the door, accompanied by a slimy noise. The entire floor consisted of a mixture between flattened beer cans and empty pizza boxes, cemented together with a brown, coagulated liquid. Troy sluggishly leaned forward to pick it up. He carefully opened the wrinkled envelope with a box cutter. A roll of bills, held together by a rubber band, was crammed behind a piece of folded paper. Troy closed the envelope to gather his thoughts. Eyes still shut, he calmly called out, Lou, we got another one. The man on the bed went still, mid-push-up. What does he want now? Troy unfolded the paper and read aloud. Could have done better. Try harder on the next one. An address followed. He counted and displayed the money to Louis. For the three times this had occurred, they were paid a total of $5,000. Louis jumped to the floor and sat on the bottom bunk. We doing this? Their accomplishments the last week, while questionable, paid more than any old job. Troy looked at his book and back at the letter. Last one. University starts tomorrow. His eyes shifted to Lewis. And then we forget all about this. As they dressed up, Lewis wandered over to the desk and drew a handgun from one of the many duffel bags. Without looking at him, Troy laughed out. <laughs> Experience says that won't help. Lewis struggled and tucked the gun under his sleeveless hoodie. Both attached flashlights to their belts. Troy placed a bottle of spray deodorant in his pocket, next to his keys and Pink Floyd lighter. Lou, how are things going with the tooth? Both are ready to go. Lewis drew two brass knuckles with a white rocky substance welded to their ends. The men got off a bus at a stop near the address. When they arrived, it was still early in the morning. Lewis, with a peeled orange in his hand, squinted and scanned the surroundings. Which one is ours? he mumbled. Troy's eyes snapped at the abandoned dog shelter. I wonder which, he sarcastically whispered to himself. Once closer, its hideous exterior became clearer. 
the front chewed up chain link gate, along with each window, was barred up with planks. Graffiti and gang signs covered the chipped, once orange painted, moist wooden walls. We should bring hammers. A chewed up piece of orange fell out of Lewis's mouth when he talked. By the time they went back to their dorm and came back, the sun was hovering high in the sky. Together they pulled out nails from the planks on a random window. Halfway done, they noticed newspapers taped to the inside of the window. Enough room to fit. Louis smashed the window with his elbow and cleared the broken glass. He squeezed through and disappeared into the dark interior. With a slight hesitation, Troy joined him. The only source of light came from the window. Both of them drew their industrial heavy-duty flashlights. They could now see the entire room. Just what someone would expect from an abandoned building. Destroyed furniture, cracked up walls, and dust. Looks like the lobby. Lewis walked over to a map on the wall. Paperwork is through here. He pointed at a rotten wooden door. Dogs are kept that way. Both of them slowly rotated their heads to see a knocked down door, covered in gashes and bite marks. Without a second thought, they bolted. Any wrestling on TV tonight? Troy asked Lewis as he sipped from a cup of coffee. The coward stood on the bench at the bus stop. They'd put the barricade up and then run. The bus isn't coming. Lewis ignored his question. That's a sign. Both stood silently under the sun for a few minutes. I could attend extra classes with that money. Troy smiled. They stared into the distance and ignored each other. I could go to a real striptease bar with that money. Lewis smiled. They found themselves in front of the dog pound again. What's the plan if something attacks us? Troy asked, fingers rubbing his ear. We beat its ass, Lewis answered, trying to sound brave. They removed the same barricade and entered again. Troy held a plank with two nails sticking out of it and stood behind Lewis. They then walked over the knocked down door. All empty. Lewis checked the closer dog cages with his flashlight. There! Troy made out a human silhouette, leaning against a wall inside a cage. Lewis held him back. Might be a trap. You stay here. He slid his brass knuckles on and approached the figure. The light revealed bloody, fly-infested dog parts ranging from limbs and rib cages to fur and canine heads, sewed together in the shape of a human body. A printed picture of a woman's face was taped around the thing's head. It's a body made out of dogs. Lewis leaned forward to pull the paper from the creature's face and pocketed it. The moment his fingers made contact, grotesque snarling came from the far end of the room. Troy's flashlight cast light, only to reveal a rotting, walking toe movement emerge from the darkness. Its grey eyeballs, with no pupils, reflected the light. Torn off lips and cheeks displayed a set of irregularly sharp yellow teeth, even for a dog. Pieces of loose flesh peeled off the canine's balding body. Yellow, crooked claws out. It leaped across the room. Lewis blocked its way scooping its wrists with one hand and shoved his flashlight into the dog's jaw. The creature shrieked and repeatedly failed to bite due to the metal keeping its mouth open. Lewis's grip slowly tightened, followed by the dog's wrists snapping and contorting. He lifted his other arm, hand balled up in a fist, and sent it down the dog's neck. The sound of its spine snapping and the floor vibrating echoed through the room as he made impact with his forearm. Troy bashed the plank into the dog's head, shoving the nails deep in the skull. With one swift motion, Lewis twisted its body, resulting in its head coming clean off, still attached to the slab of wood. Ugh, that'll be imprinted in my nightmares for a while. 
Troy stared at the plank, eyes wide open, for a few seconds before throwing it to the side. Lewis retrieved his flashlight and stood up. Let's keep moving. They ventured deeper. More and more posters, pictures and papers of that girl hung on the cages. This time they could see more than her face. She wore erotic, daring dresses and, in some pictures, stood in the embraces of a suited man. The piece of paper where the man's head was would always be ripped off. Troy tried to recall any of those people. Who are they? Why are there pictures here? Louis stopped and turned to Troy. Oh, I remember now. I heard about this guy in Alpha Male magazine. He turned back to the posters and examined them closer. The dude's Andrew Thomas. I recognize his signature bicep game. Yeah, he sells yachts and is totally loaded. And that chick must be Jenny. He's a gold digger for the last two months. <laughs> Sounds like you're in love with this Andrew guy, Troy giggled. <laughs> Only with biceps. God, how does he get such results? They reached the end of the corridor. The cages ended and a trap door to the basement faced them. It was wide open and the well-known stench of rotting flesh hit them from inside. Quiet dog whimpering could barely be heard. If the dog's being bitten, we kill it, Lewis whispered. They made their way in. Two dogs had nails impaled through their paws and hung on the wall. One had those grey eyes and twitched, while the other was still awake. Another ten skinny, starved ones wrapped in chains laid in the corner. The ones on the wall had bite marks, revealing bone and muscle. The floor was covered in gore, dog limbs and fur. Next to the hanging undead dog, a figure sat on a stool. Next to the hanging undead dog, a figure sat on a stool. He was talking to himself with a magazine in one hand, the other hand around the dog's leg. A stack of pictures of that girl laid in a circle around him. He casually took a bite from the dog's leg, revealing a set of razor-sharp teeth and continued reading. Lewis snapped a bone with his foot, which gave their location away. The figure looked at them, revealing it was a man with pale, empty grey eyes, similar to the undead. It felt like he wasn't looking at them, but rather through them. The undead calmly talked without opening his mouth too wide. I don't get a lot of guests down here. There was something distant in his voice. It took a whiff of the air. Especially humans. They kept a safe distance. You could point those flashlights away. It's implied. The light didn't appear to physically bother him in any way. Troy turned his off. You're the one who's infecting these dogs. He looked at the two on the wall. The undead one looked absent-minded, while the other displayed fear and pain. A man's gotta eat, he smiled, revealing his sharp teeth. The same growling as before came from all directions. One dog crawled down the trap door, a second emerged from the dark corner. They hadn't noticed a third one hanging from the ceiling. Hmm, I haven't devoured human meat in a while. He slowly got to his feet. Lewis put his fists up, ready for combat. Troy, hardly keeping his calm facade, took a few quick glances around and stepped forward. I'm looking for Jenny, he confidently stated. The dogs instantly stopped growling. The man closed his mouth and, for the first time, his dead eyes blinked and focused on Troy. He stood idle for a few moments and yelled. Lies! The dog snarled. Hey, we were childhood friends. Jenny was always there for me. Troy lied through his teeth. The undead sat back on his stool. She was always kind. 
he closed his eyes. Wait. He opened them and stared at Troy. I've known her since we were nine. I don't remember you. His voice cracked. It didn't feel as distant anymore. Troy, still keeping eye contact, slowly replied. I knew her from age six to eight. The undood stood silent and carefully listened. I recently saw her in this magazine. Troy looked around and saw the dogs were calm. Um, when we were little, uh, he couldn't think of what to say next. She made him promise something. Lewis finished his sentence. Troy looked at him and then back at the man. Yeah, if uh, she ever got together with a douchebag, I should remind her. Troy remembered the man's words from earlier. Yeah, um, I should remind her she's a kind person. Uh, yeah. Lewis leaned on Troy's shoulder with his elbow. You can't. The master changed her memories. Although his eyes were still grey, the man clearly showed emotion. Troy put a hand on his shoulder. Who is the monster? The man that infected me. He wanted me to turn into a monster. Lewis crossed his arms. Bro, judging by all the brutally mutilated dogs, he succeeded. The undead pushed Troy back and took a swing at Lewis, who jumped back and avoided the attack. I am no monster. I am a good person, he yelled. Eyes wide open, his head slowly shifted towards the still, whimpering dog. Shivers went through the man's body. Tears gathered in his eyes. The dog flinched back as he put his palm to his cheek to pet it. The man collapsed to the ground and began to cry a black liquid, hit by the realization of what he had become. The undead dogs went limp as well. Hey, it's never too late to change. Troy extended his hand. We can make her remember. We'll find a way. The man looked at him from the floor. I'm a monster. How can I possibly change? If I can change, so can you. Lewis tried to smile. The man took Troy's hand and got up. Together, they made their way out of the building. Lewis stood alone in the dark, took a deep breath, and walked up to the whimpering dog. I'm so sorry we didn't get here earlier. He held back a single tear and then drew his handgun. Gunfire echoed through the basement. Lewis turned towards the two undead dog bodies and sighed. Ah, clean up time. The fire department was too late to save the burning abandoned dog shelter. They could only guess it was arson on part of a local street gang. A neighboring shelter answered an anonymous call and found ten starving dogs tied to a bus bench. Each one was placed in a new shelter and got nursed back to full health. The undead man patiently waited on a bench. Troy and Lewis whispered, deciding on what to do. Good work, bro. We got him in the open. Lewis cracked his knuckles. I say we tie him in the basement and get whatever we can from him. I meant what I said. Troy had a serious look on his face. Having an undead on our side will put us at a great advantage. You want to befriend that thing? Did you see what it did to those dogs? Lewis raised his voice. Uh, if that's what it takes, yes. Lewis looked at the walking corpse. If I fail, you can have him. If you fail, it might be too late. Lewis crossed his arms. Both of them watched the man in silence. So, here's the big question. How do you want the story to continue? Will it be A. Immobilize the undead and beat the crap out of him to get information. B. Attempt to gain the undead's trust, and hope it willingly shares information. Or C. 
do you have a better suggestion of how to finish this story? Your thoughts, feelings, comments, and most importantly, your decision in the comment section below the video. And that is how this story will continue. Well, my dear friends, that's all from me for one evening. But of course, I will be back again soon. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how you decide this story should finish. Until then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>